Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have the 1500th episode of, of the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and I've got a shark with me. Why? Because I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to do as many shark episodes as I can in one day. I'm not going to watch all of it. No, no, no. I'm going to watch a few minutes of each, maybe sometimes a few seconds, because I kind of think I'm going to get the drift of most of them. We're setting aside the hat for a day, coming back to the Christmas stuff tomorrow, but for now, I have 36 shark things, shark episodes on National Geographic. And by the way, this is probably from Aquaman. I borrowed it from a four and a two-year-old. So thanks, Connor and and Parker. But uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think Aquaman doesn't need to ride a shark. But regardless, I am going to hopefully do a quick review of each one of these uh, <laughs> things as best I can in a few seconds each because to do 36 of them. Yes, I've already watched like 18 or so random ones over the years. I I've stopped because there were so many. And currently there's 36. And technically there's even more right now because unless you specifically name the show that you want to watch, you're going to get a lot of Hulu stuff if you're in America and you're part of the part of the plan, I've been on it since the beginning, since Disney Plus started, Hulu searches are now included. Hulu shows are now included in my searches. So I get Shark Tank and I get Shark starring uh, like Jerry Ryan, you know, from, from Star Trek, uh, Voyager, so, and Picard. So yeah, <laughs> I'm going to do my best to burn through 36 shark episodes. So we just get them out of the way. I usually watch the entire episode or movie or whatever it is of everything I watch. In this case, I'm sampling and I'm going to give you hopefully a, a clear understanding. This could be a total, total train wreck. I have no idea, but we're going to start <sighs> with 50 Shades of Sharks now. 50 Shades of Sharks. Yeah. Uh, this uh, this one actually sounds interesting, despite its very sort of clickbaity type of name, you know, based on the thing. There's no, um, you know, no rough stuff in this, except for, okay, sharks being eaten, sharks eating other fish and things, and, uh, uh yeah, there is some shark sex. So, yeah, <laughs> so, depending on how you feel about that, you know, maybe you may or may not want to keep the kids around for those scenes. But yeah, uh, they mentioned it right off in the intro. I Again, I only watched a minute or two, but still. This actually seems one of the more interesting, it seems like one of the more interesting ones. The shots that I saw were great. Uh, it's pretty well detailed. It's from 2020, so it's pretty pretty new. Uh, the next one is uh, 700 Sharks. 700 Sharks isn't on Disney Plus anymore. It's gone. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to watch next, but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. So... Whatever the shark thing is next is what we'll Baby sharks! Do, 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 do. Whatever the song is, I I try to avoid hearing it. Uh, this one, the minute or so that I watched, uh, showed some really, like here, a very vulnerable, very tiny little shark uh, and just uh, what they need to do in order to survive, which includes um, uh, walking on land or crawling, in a sense, on land without legs and also eating your siblings. So that... That seems like a fun uh, exercise uh, thing to watch. This is from uh, 2022, also 44 minutes long. Most of these are 44 minutes long. So um, uh, the next one we're going to watch is Bull Shark something. Dang it, I've already forgotten. Something about bull sharks. So he's next. Bull Shark Bandits is what we're watching. Uh, what I just watched. It's uh, at least a, a minute or two of it. Uh, Bull Shark Bandits. Uh, th th it's mainly about a research team in Australia that is uh, watching these sharks as they seem to be getting smarter. And that makes them more dangerous, obviously. We gotta watch out for that. Um, so yeah, they, they have a, apparently a new hunting technique they, they watch. This is a lot about, the, of course, the sharks, but it's a lot about the research team down in Australia that... Uh, is trying to figure out a way to determine just how smart they're becoming and what they do in order to outwit anybody else. And this is the only kind of time I'm ever going to be wagging a shark around while I talk. So next, bull sharks versus hammerheads. Bull sharks versus hammerheads. Now, now 
this is another clickbaity type of title where you're just like, oh my gosh, one cool shark versus another cool shark. And so there's going to be a, like a shark battle that you're going to watch. Maybe. I only watched again the beginning and the end for the most part to give it an idea of context and uh, what this is all about and what point of view it's being taken from. By the way, these are all pretty much from National Geographic. Until I find one that's not, I'll... I'll, I'll let you know, but this is from 2023. It's brand new, actually, so it's 43 minutes long, and uh, it sort of sets up uh, the entire th thing where uh, the sharks, uh, somebody's filming this on their phone at the beach somewhere in the United States, probably in the Carolinas, I, I don't know, probably down in Florida, probably, but uh, where you see a, a bull shark uh, kind of bullying a hammerhead, and then he gets another bull shark, and then they just sort of corner him against the beach and then just eat him and then you gotta you gotta figure out why this happened because they normally do not do that kind of thing to each other unless as the guy says things are really imbalanced and they find an opportunity where you know what this guy's an easy mark so yeah, this shark has a wheel on it all right <laughs> all right uh the next one is camo sharks camo sharks yeah the great white shark, can it change its color to be subtly in certain ways to uh, make it more sneaky and sneak up on its prey and eat it? Well, that's what this episode uh, pretty much uh, proposes. And it's from 2023, it's another brand new one from this year. Uh, well, you know, you got to figure that, hey, if they're going to bring it up, guess what they're going to find? They're not going to come, they're gonna, not going to bring this up and go, oh, you know what? No, there's no evidence of that whatsoever. I think we're just going to, no, just forget that, what we just said. Clickbait. So, uh, <laughs> it's easy enough. So, yeah, find out how and why they were able to find out that some sharks actually can, or they believe they can. I, I don't know. They're... They're pretty convinced, let's just say that, uh, that they can change colors. So what we're going to watch next is, oh no, cannibal sharks. Cannibal sharks. This is the uh, another National Geographic thing. By the way, the fact that I was able to just type in C-A-N-N -N, and this immediately came up as the first result and nothing else with cannibalism pretty much says a lot about what's on Disney Plus and Hulu right now. There is literally just one show even on hulu uh you figure that concludes like fx and everything else only one thing that has cannibalism in the title is cannibal sharks this is another 43 minute uh documentary from 2019 and uh yeah with all the scary kind of music and everything else this is one of the more distressing episodes i only watched a few minutes again i essentially watched the beginning of each of these things and the end to see if they conclude something that is uh, unexpected but it goes expect pretty much as you expect from the start. Uh, in this, uh, you get to see a, a lot of gory bits. Uh, they even do like an autopsy on a shark uh, sitting like on a table. And there's headless sharks. There's sharks eating other sharks in the womb. There are sharks just eating each other with just a shark hanging out in their mouth as they're swimming around. There's just sharks everywhere eating other sharks. So if you have the stomach for it, this 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 could be yours this could be something for, something for you but yeah no it's if you need your, your a touch of cannibalism in your uh uh entertainment on disney plus well here you go but for those of you who like something a little bit different um i, I can't imagine what this is going to parody considering the name we're going to be watching Game of Sharks. It's the Game of Sharks. There is no Targaryens or Lannisters or Starks in this at all. No, this is treated as if it was an actual competition between different breeds of sharks, different species of sharks, and that they're all like in competition with each other. They're, they're not. It's a lot of clips of different sharks doing shark things. And uh, it's basically just taking a lot of factoids about different types of sharks, putting them into a point system. And then coming up with it's almost like the, like the 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 sweet sixteen and the, uh, the eight and the the, the basketball thing with the scoring and the thing like that yeah so yeah that's basically <laughs> the final four so they bring it down to the last the top five shark types and 
you might be able to guess who the top, those top five are. Yeah, they're pretty well known. So, but yeah, who's number one? Well, you got to watch this to find out. So, but if you're in a hurry like me, I got to get on to the next thing. We're going to be watching the Great Shark Chowdown. I don't know where the shark has been. Uh, this is the Great Shark Chowdown, and uh, <laughs> the Great Shark Chowdown, it is what it, exactly what it says. It's, it, you want to see sharks eating? You want to see lots of sharks eating lots of fish and probably other sharks and anything else that gets in their way? Well, the Great Shark Chowdown is pretty much it. There's a, uh, just from the opening sequence uh, where they show just like the, um, the, there's this off the coast of South Africa, just these just densely packed sardine run is I think that's what they call it. Uh, they just, you can see the discolor of the water. They're so thick with fish that just, hey, we're just swimming the way the current takes us. Well, the sharks know to show up in the hundreds and then just eat and just go to town. So if you want to see them, it, they're bloody best at uh, chowing down on giant whales and and little fish and everything else, and you and it followed the science of as to why and how they uh, they do these things. Um, well, that's that's what you're gonna get. I have already forgotten what we're gonna watch next. Every, I'm doing everything so far alphabetically, so whatever is after Great Shark Chow Down on the list is what we're watching next. This is Maui Shark Mystery. This is. I'm <laughs> sorry, I didn't remember that uh, from a second ago. Uh, but Mary, Maui Shark Mystery, it is another documentary. This is uh, from 2022. It's, again, 44 minutes long. And it's on that, from National Geographic. Uh, it, it features, uh, well, it takes place in Maui, obviously. And there's there's a lot of sharks there to start with. But why? And uh, what can they learn from the, the fact that there's so many sharks and so much life in there? I mean, it's, it's a very diverse uh, underwater sea kingdom kind of thing going on there uh but uh what can we learn and the people that are uh learning this are uh th at least they feature at least three women one of which is named Paige. she grew up in a small town near a lake and everything else but she then moved to hawaii when she saw a shark and she's just like i've been doing this ever since i can i just love fish and also sharks and uh you get to see them as like the very first scene shows her <laughs> her job is to put a clamp onto the dorsal fin of a shark just like that. And sharks tend not to like that, um, I, I, I would guess. So yeah, she gets to do that. And uh, it's, a, it's a team of, of women just, uh, by the way, looking super great and, and dramatic the way they shoot them. I, I'm pretty sure none of us have ever looked that cool doing anything, which is our job ever. Uh, unless you're like an actor or something like that, you know, like you're John Wick, like Keanu Reeves looks probably so much cooler in John Wick than he probably looks or feels in real life. But in this case, these women just shooting from these just heroic angles and, oh, and uh, narration is by, uh, I'm gonna say her name wrong, Avali Cravalo. She, she's the, uh, Moana, Moana narrates this. At least that's what it said in the thing. I didn't hear her voice in the short part that I watched and I've already forgotten, uh, I forgot the next one again. <sighs> So yeah, more sharks after this. There's a lot more sharks after this. This is Most Extreme Sharks. Uh, Most Extreme Sharks Steve, starring Steve Blackshaw. This is actually a series, four episode series, all about 45 minutes long each from 2023. So it's brand new. Uh, it is uh, basically, again, we get a, uh, in the very beginning, we get some pretty dramatic, super heroic type shots uh, featuring Steve as he's like standing on the deck of an underwater shipwreck and walking towards the camera with his goggles on, looking all majestic as sharks and other fish swim around him. And then he just launches off the bow into the, uh, to the, to the surface. And it, it looks like he's flying. It's very dramatic, but he has a big message to say, not just to look cool. Uh, he has, uh, he wants to show that, you know, they, they, a lot of these creatures, they're very diverse. There's so many different types and he kind of celebrates that. And he also talks about how uh, misunderstood uh, they're they're dangerous, but they're they're also um, vulnerable. And uh, guess who their greatest predator is? Not me personally, but uh, humanity. And uh, he put, posits that not only is, uh, if we're if these creatures have been around for more than four hundred million years, uh, <laughs> if we're putting a dent in their productivity over 400 million years, odds are we won't wipe them out completely because they're pretty resilient. But the fact that we could at all uh, says something. 
Um, but yeah, it's a, we, sh we should all also be their saviors if we're also the ones who are their greatest threat. So that's kind of his thing. Uh, but who else is out to get the, the sharks? Could it be the orca? Next one is orca. Orca versus great white. Orca versus great white. It's an eternal struggle. They've been at each other's throats literally, I guess, for uh, centuries, uh, millennia, I don't know. Uh, they uh, th This puts some pretty intense looking uh, footage off the coast of South Africa, I believe, uh, between uh, the, <laughs> the orcas, the killer whales, and the great white sharks, which considered, you know, the top level shark out there, the most widely known, you know, the jaws of of the shark world. Um, so yeah, it, 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 if you're interested in finding out how these guys get along or don't get along, well, uh, this is the episode for you. This is, this is the thing you need to watch. It's, uh, it, it even takes you all the way to New Zealand and there's very menacing music throughout. And it, there's, there's even a mention of serial shark killings. Like orcas seem like, oh, they're nice and they're, they're soft and not so rough edged like these sharks that Aquaman and his friends seem to ride. Uh, but they're, they're killers. They're monsters. They're all monsters. Sea monsters. So, yeah. Um, oh, dang. I know what we were going to watch next. And it is, uh, or Orca versus, so we did the Orca versus, oh, dang it. Well, we'll figure it out. I, I know, I know what it is. I know what it is. It was Return of the White Shark. Return, yeah, Return of the White, Return of the White Shark. Uh, <laughs> I just mentioned Jaws a minute ago, and uh, it was, this This one takes place in Cape Cod, pretty much the same general area as where, uh, where Jaws took place. Although, was that New Jersey? No, I thought it was the North, I thought it was New England. Either way, um, uh, it, this is talking about how there's, there had been shark uh, attacks in 10 times in the last five years or five times in the last 10 years. I don't know. But uh, this is from 2023. It's also pretty brand new. And uh, it, it tells us uh, th th there's a guy that's in this who pretty much makes a case that it's a good thing that the sharks are there. Th when it comes to summertime and people go out to the beach, uh, guess what? You're going to find sharks in the water as well. But why are they there? Well, they're there for the seal meat. The seal meat that's sunning itself out there little further out than all the families playing in the sand they're they're not necessarily to, to eat the kids they're there to eat the fat blubbery seals so yeah that's <laughs> that's what it's there for but the fact that they're all there creates a ecosystem that is fantastic so the sharks should be there if they're not then guess what too many seals and not enough room for you to go to the beach in cape cod so just be careful when you go out there. By the way, so I don't forget these things. I finally brought my tablet out, and as long as it doesn't turn off, I'll know what the next thing is without having to go, oh, where, which one? Did it, I forgot which one's next. So the next one is Rogue Shark? Question mark. Is this how I was posing a few minutes ago? I don't know. I don't remember. But this is Rogue Shark, this episode. Uh, Rogue Shark? <laughs> Question mark. It asks a question off the uh, the coast of Australia in Sid Harbor. Well, were the people just asking for it because they went swing? I, I don't know. Uh, in this, uh, there's a bunch of people who are examining the conflict of where, why people keep getting bit in uh, this four football field area space uh, just off the coast of Australia. And um, they, they, they give us a little bit of... Um, shark smart tips on what to do when you're out swimming in areas where there probably are sharks. There's usually signs that say sharks. Uh, and also uh, they, they kind of research why the sharks may be a little bit more aggressive there as compared to um, other places. And whose fault is it anyway? Were you, were you just asking for it? Just looking too tasty? Is that the problem? This is the episode. It's uh, it's 44 minutes also. It's from 2021. And yeah, so yeah, that's what you're going to get from that. Next one is, sounds a little bit more hopeful. I, oh, by the way, in this one, a woman named Justine, they do a recreation of her getting her leg pretty much bitten off. Uh, but that she survived and she's got rehabilitation. They kind of put her leg back together and you see her walking down the beach with a cane later on. So 
even though there's a pretty much blood in the, one of the early scenes of this, she's going to be okay. And that's what's important. Uh, and so that's kind of uh, ooky in, in this. But this next one is a bit more hopeful. This one's called Saved from a Shark. Saved by a Shark. This is, uh, <laughs> I just realized it's, this is actually a play of probably Saved by an Angel. No, Saved from an Angel. No, no. Anyway, it's Saved from a Shark. And this is a fairly graphic one uh, depicting a shark attack on a specific person, not just like, oh, here's a news report that we talk about in the third person. It, 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 it's just, it is, they interview the guy who was attacked and what led up to the attack and why and and what they did to rescue him. This is actually one I watched a little bit longer than I do some of the other ones. It went six, seven minutes almost. I think it was almost 10 minutes, but by the time I scrubbed the head a little bit till they actually finished the story. But they really built this up. Uh, if you want to see it go into a lot of detail of just uh, dealing with a shark coming at you, um, they were dragging him. They, they were off the coast of, uh, oh, they were in the Red Sea. This is a different place. Normally it's off of Australia or uh, United States or South Africa or somewhere else. This place, uh, the Red Sea of all places, um, is a tourist trap. And the one guy, uh, Martin, I think, gets in the water and decides that, oh, that we have a rope off the edge of the boat. Let's hang onto that and move the, let's, let's just pull him behind. You know what that looks like? That looks like a lure. That looks like bait. And uh, so once he starts to, you know, he lets go of the rope and relaxes just a bit. Of course, the shark's going to be like, okay, that looks good. And there's lots of biting or describing the biting. It's all, you know, canned footage. It's all you know, just edited together footage of a shark that was more than likely similar to what was biting him. And lots of footage of an actor in bloody water going ow, you know, pretty much, uh, screaming shark. And then they tell this story about how they realized it. And it, it took about 10 minutes to tell what happened in the course of 40 seconds. So I scrubbed, I scrubbed to the end of the thing. And then there's a woman talking about whales protecting her. So there's more to this than just saved from a shark. So could be interesting to see if you want to see a much more detailed uh, story of survival this would be it. Although I think we have some more coming up. But until then, the next episode is, well, we're going back to the bull shark. Secrets of the bull shark. What does he have to tell us? What is he hiding? Secrets of the bull shark is what's next. What the heck was that? Secrets of the bull shark. This is, the secrets that we have are really not that secret they he likes they like to eat people um not really okay they don't they don't necessarily go out of their well no wait if anybody goes out of their way in the shark world it is the bull shark they have the ability to go in fresh water as well as salt water um they have been known to go up rivers into canals into people have found them in lakes in uh, freshwater lakes, somehow they got there when water rises during flooding and things like that. So yeah, uh, they they get they've they've invaded New Orleans. They've gone gone all the way up the Mississippi to, to St. Louis. They're everywhere. And what this really uh, looks at is the migration patterns and things like that, and just you know what we can learn about uh, <laughs> just just knowing that these sharks they tend to be aggressive, especially these bull sharks. That's where they get the name. Um, but yeah, it's it's really, that's all the secret really is. They, they like to bite. And uh, they migrate to some incredible extremes. This one is actually uh, pretty interesting from everything I saw. It's not just, you know, technical. Oh, they go this far. Now they, you know, they like, to, they like uh, the Mississippi River. No, it's, it's a little bit more than that. But again, it's also overly dramatized with the music and everything else so take it for what it is the next one we have is shark attack files i don't know what pose to do for this shark attack files was i holding him this way i don't know i don't remember this is shark attack files uh this is a series actually two seasons about 14 episodes total uh they all run about uh, 45 minutes each uh, wait, why do I can't see that? It's okay down here. Yeah, there we go. Forty-five minutes each. So yeah, it's uh, if you if you really love people's really 
uh, rough camera footage, cell phone footage, or handy cam footage from 30 years ago, uh, this is the one for you spread out over 14 episodes of people being attacked by sharks or the aftermath of people screaming. And of course, some also reenactments of people going and screaming underwater uh, mixed in with stock footage of, of sharks attacking the camera. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really only for the aficionado who cares less about sharks and more about how they attack people. And if you, that excites you, this, this is your series. So you've got f almost 14 hours worth of this. So yeah, if they had commercials, maybe you have the one the version with the commercials and then yeah, you have to sit with the commercials. I don't know. So yeah, it's a, this is a, this is one of those, another one of those fun things. Uh, the, the, the next one is more shark attack stuff, but this one's an investigation. This is about a specific person. This is Shark Attack Investigation, the Page Winter Story. I've forgotten how I'm holding this last time. So, <laughs> no continuity. Shark Attack Investigation, the Page Winter Story, is what, what I just watched a bit of. Uh, this tells the story of a young woman, 17 or so at the time, in 2019, a couple of years ago. This came out in 2021. Uh, tells the story of her experience as to going swimming on a vacation in North Carolina and a shark coming by and just biting her left leg off. Yeah, pretty much halfway up the thigh, just gone. And I think it messed with her hands a little bit, but uh, yeah, I, she was I, she was able to fight it off. And it, it tells the story of her experience and her family's experience. It's her dad right there. Um, he, uh, he, he just sort of, uh, you know, he's a guy who feels, he's just, it's her dad. And he, he's like, I want to, I want to be the guy who protects her. And he couldn't be, a, he couldn't protect her, uh, f from this. And it, it, it kind of affected everybody to a certain degree, but mostly Paige because she lost a leg. So yeah, uh, she gets an interview by Robin Roberts from, I guess, 2020, uh, in this. So it's, it, it's, uh, there's, there's a whole 2020 aspect to this. So yeah, but it's National Geographic. So, uh, yeah, it's, this is, has a more personal bent to it. It's not so, um, sharks bite things. Sharks are cool. Sharks have different colors. Sharks, no, this is specifically about, um, Paige's experience, human experience, her, everything she had to go through, the rehabilitation, uh, just walking again, having, wa walking with a prosthetic leg and things like that. So it's, it's, um, it's a, it's a lot of her story more than about sharks, like knowledge about shark migration or whatever, things like that. So it's a much more human story in this case. Uh, in uh, the end, though, I skipped to the end. Uh, you find, discovered she's a person who now uh, speaks out for uh, for shark kind, <laughs> in a sense. She is uh, she's an advocate for uh, shark conservation and understanding uh, the sharks and how to better interact, inter interrelate with them, interact with them when you're out swimming. <laughs> so, uh, just, uh, she's become a voice because she's, she became, it became such a, a big deal at the time, of course, when she was attacked that, uh, she could have just been a mopey teenager and just went, mm, screw sharks. Sharks are dumb. She does have a very, uh, kind of a, I don't know, silly but lighthearted uh, take on this. I'm pretty sure it's not always been a happy, fun, fun time since this happened, but uh, she has a kind of a almost humorous take on uh, her experience to a certain degree. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it might be worth checking out if you want a more human angle on all the shark stuff. So, all right, speaking of humans, or maybe gods, we're gonna be the next thing we're gonna be watching is Shark Beach with Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, Thor himself has a, I think, a National Geographic shark special. It's a 45-minute thing. I just checked. So, yeah, that's what we're watching next. Shark Beach with Chris Hemsworth. Um, that's going to be my pose. By the power of Chris Hemsworth, this is Shark Beach with Chris Hemsworth. Uh, yeah, the mighty Thor. He's a surfer. He, You know, he's from Australia. And, well, those two tend to go together a lot uh, with... You know, your, your continent surrounded by water. Why not go surfing? Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah. And so, basically, this is is a 45-minute episode from 2021. 
44 minute episode and uh it talks about his experience and uh original fears and hesitations when it comes to sharks he had for a while he, i mean he'd been surfing for years but he'd never really in, in encountered a shark he's had the sense that maybe there might be sharks nearby he's gotten a little bit of that vibe but he's never had an encounter so he's uh stepping up and taking a shot at with some people to get closer to sharks better understand them and of course it's uh, the it's the, the, the story tends to go that uh, with a lot of these things, these are, this is all about the, the conservation, uh, the, the understanding of the ecology and everything else of these creatures and how to better preserve their lives, even though some of them like to bite us. Uh, they, they even say at the very beginning of the episode, uh, special, whatever it is, uh, that shark attacks have increased in number of years in Australia where he surfs. Uh, and it's kind of, you know, been a little bit upsetting and it try, it's ba basically they're trying to understand why and uh yeah so this is his own experience in this There's a lot of dramatic photos of him walking toward the sea and looking out over the water with his blue eyes and muscles and it's very dramatic and uh yeah so if you're not really interested in sharks but you like chris hemsworth this might be a nice marriage of the two and uh, you just learn about sharks and you just get to see Chris Hemsworth surfing. So, yeah, I guess that's a good deal. Yeah. You're already subscribed, so might as well. Um, the next thing we want to do is uh, the next episode is Shark Below Zero. This is Shark Below Zero. Uh, <laughs> uh, why, why am I that dramatic that, there, that there's... Yeah, there's no need for that. Uh, so yeah, this is a story about a uh, documentary. Of course, National Geographic. It is uh, 44 minutes. It's from 2023. It's brand new. And, uh, or f at least from this year. And uh, <laughs> however long that lasts. Um, we've got a few days left. Uh, this uh, is talking about how sharks uh, have, at least it seems recently, the news report seemed kind of old, but sharks uh, attacking somebody off the coast of Canada. Now, sharks tend to, from what I saw in previous things, if you're playing along, previous things, they tend to stick to warmer waters around different uh, continents, you know, especially Florida, the coast of Brazil, Australia, of course, South Africa, Indonesia, all these places tend to attract sharks and people also swimming in the waters. The fact that somebody was out swimming in the waters off the coast of Canada and a shark bit her uh, is a rare thing. In fact, it was the first reported incident in over 150 years. Kind of a big deal. So uh, they're basically examining what could have led it uh, up that direction. Uh, how many are there? And uh, if there's a real danger. So this is interesting in that aspect. By the way, you're going to notice a number of familiar faces. <laughs> if you've kept up with all the things I've just watched here, uh, if you're taking notes, as I'm sure all of you are, um, assuming a single one of you is even watching this, uh, there is seriously uh, a number of familiar uh, experts throughout this. I don't know why I did the quote thing. They are experts. Uh, that's that would be disrespectful. I, I they have they have more knowledge than I do about any of this. So yes, they're experts. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's going to be uh, it's 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 interesting. So yeah, you'll see more of these guys probably in the next few episodes. We're more than halfway through, by the way. If you don't know what I'm, somehow that you've gotten this far and you don't know what I'm doing, I'm doing the rest of the shark episodes, as far as I know, that are on Disney Plus specifically, not counting Hulu. I did this count, this selection, before Hulu got rolled into my account. So, in the beta. So, um, but, so the next thing we're going to do is Shark Eat Shark. Okay, hey, Shark Eat Shark. I'm not a shark, but I... Pretended uh, to eat this shark. I do not know where this shark has been. It belongs to two toddlers, and it could have been in their mouths as well. But, hey, kids are disgusting. So, uh, <laughs> this one is Shark Eat Shark, uh, right? Yeah, Shark Eat Shark. Uh, I was wrong. We did have cannibal sharks up before. This one is also pretty much about the same thing. And I saw some footage from other... Of episodes of this things a lot of this footage gets reused just so you're aware it's just packaged a little bit differently with different experts different fishermen different uh 
people flying drones and people in boats, people diving. They're, some of them are exactly the same people. There's one guy is a super, he's a character. He's got the, the jewelry, he's got the, the pierced eyebrows and ears and everything else. And he's got a very thick accent. And I'm pretty sure that he was expecting uh, his <laughs> his final quote that's used at the very end of the episode to be the name of the episode, Shark Wars. How there isn't a Shark Wars? I'm pretty sure there's probably a Shark Wars uh, thing out there somewhere, but maybe it was already used and they couldn't use it. In this case, it's Shark Eat Shark. It's a Shark Eat Shark world, as has been said a number of times, <laughs> at least also in the Cannibal episode. So yeah, that's all I can really say about that. I want to blow through the rest of these. In fact, the uh, next one we got is Shark Queens. I don't know the pose I'm going to do for this. Shark Queens. Shark Queens. Yeah, this is the latest episode here in this very long series of shark-related things for the 1500th episode of the D Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. Uh, this one has a wheel. Uh, you will not find that in the ocean, by the way. Uh, even the female ones. This is from 2022. This is a 44-minute documentary about female sharks, specifically, and uh, how they're different from males. And uh, does it make them... Are they more aggressive? Are they bigger? Are they smaller? Are they, what, what are, what's it all about? What is it all about with the female sharks? Uh, you should watch it to find out. Uh, they are... I mean, great white sharks, especially. They're known as being massive creatures, 20 feet long or more. Uh, but the women, the females... The female sharks, the queens, tend to be bigger, heavier, like two tons. And especially mainly, they have, they have the thicker skin. Uh, they have all sorts of other uh, attributes that the male does not have. And it can make them more aggressive, too. Make them more dangerous for anything that gets in their path. Uh, because, you know, they got to feed for the, any babies they're carrying. You know, uh, they, can, they, can have, they can have up to like 17 pups. Yeah, they call them pups. 17 pups at a time, and they're like five foot long each inside them. And they're already massive creatures. Can you imagine watching that birth? No, 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 no. The only thing that's probably worse than seeing something go into a shark is something coming out of a shark 17 times. <laughs> About the size of a human. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's queen sharks. Queen shark, shark queens. Uh, we're gonna do the next three. It is shark versus shark versus. I'm gonna try to see if I can do all three of them and talk about them <laughs> um, rather than coming back each time. I'm gonna see if I can. Well, maybe, you know what? I'm probably still gonna have to do that because I have to change the picture and the, the color. So the next thing is we're gonna do. But I'm gonna try to do them real quick. Shark versus surfer. I, I don't know how I was holding this <laughs> again. Again, uh, th th this is uh, sh sharks versus surfers. Yeah, shark, just one shark versus one surfer. It's 44 minutes. It's from 2020, and it is a, uh, of course, a documentary about sharks versus their greatest known enemy, the surfer, with a machine gun, maybe. Uh, no, in this case, uh, there's a lot of, they give you a warning at the beginning that there's a uh, number of uh, pretty brutal uh, shark attack stories. Again, it is uh, actors. <laughs> well, no, okay. That, it's Yeah, it is actors. It's recreations done in lots of splashy red water uh, intercut with footage of sharks that were shot when they were not attacking a human being. So it's not really something you need to worry about. But if people get upset by blood too easily, yeah, you might want to skip this one. But uh, yeah, it, it tells you a little bit about uh, what the summary is here is that why why are shark uh, attacks increasing? Why would it? Uh, and it's, it's because, uh, well, there's been more humans. We're, 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 even though there's tons of sharks out there, uh, there's still even more humans. The more people showing up every day, the more people on the beach, and the more they're going to mess with nature. And uh, the chances are increasing. But the thing is, uh, it says at the very end that there's maybe four death by shark attacks per year yeah, around the world as compared to the like 100 million that uh, we're responsible for the death of sharks. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much sums it up. Um, so, yeah, that's a pretty, pretty simple 
pretty, pretty simple uh, explanation of what that is. Check it out if, if, you're, if you're a surfer. And uh, yeah, a lot of these people are, don't ever go back into the water after this. Some people get right back up in that board to go out there. Uh, it all depends. But this is a number of different people's stories. Uh, what we're going to watch next is shark versus tuna. Shark versus tuna. I don't know how I was holding this last time, but it's only been a few minutes. But apparently it's enough to make me forget. Uh, shark versus tuna is this episode. And it is, uh, it, it seemed like an unfair fight. Because, you know, it's sharks. And tuna, I don't have cans of shark in my cupboard. That's just, you know, it's, I have cans of tuna in my cupboard. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it seems like, you know, one, one is a little bit more dominant than the rest, but one is super fast, uh, super huge, like twice the size of a man, a yellowfin, yellowtail, I guess. I, I just don't look at tuna a lot, except when I'm eating it. So it, it really, I didn't really realize how big they were, especially down in the Galapagos, Ascension Island, uh, where they've shot a lot of the footage here. This is from 2018, 44 minutes, as they all are, seems to be. Um, and you get to see uh, how they battle it out, how the balance is kept between the two of them. And uh, at the very end, I skipped ahead, of course, and uh, saw a fisherman basically just had a dead tuna on the end of a line, and you just get to see the sharks just chow down on that thing, just tear it apart in seconds. It's pretty devastating. So they do put, I don't know if this is one of them, maybe it was the surfer one. They all seem to have warnings sometimes, like, oh, especially when there's people involved, watch out. This might be upsetting for people. Not so for this one. It's just tunas. They're not people. The next one is more not people, but uh, something much more majestic than tuna. It's shark versus whale. Dun dun. Oh, by the way, speaking of dun dun, uh, this one that you could tell the composer worked out really hard on trying to emulate pieces of John Williams' sh Jaws score just a little bit. Uh, there's a, there's a hint of it, but it, not enough to like, oh, you need to pay, you know, you need to pay Steven Spielberg and John Williams some money now. No, no, that wasn't the case. So, yeah. Okay. Shark versus whale next. Shark versus whale. <laughs> We're still, I'm still at it here. Uh, shark versus whale. The shark versus surfer and tuna and now whale. Well, it, it seems like a really unfair fight because whales tend to just sort of, depending on the type of whale, not counting the, like the orca killer whale, but most whales either eat plankton or krill or things like that. They're not necessarily like, uh, let's go after other uh, sizable fish. <clears throat> In this case, though, um, this episode specifically sees uh, uses drone footage where they just happen to capture a shark actually attacking a whale because, because technically you don't necessarily find shark a shark or many sharks attacking a single whale or many whales uh, even if they cross their migration path or whatever they, they don't tend to uh, attack them because they're so much bigger they're so huge and the the, the power and the strength of the whale can easily uh, out uh, take out a great, even a great white in many cases, many cases. But in this uh, drone footage that uh, this uh, cameraman found uh, he, or he filmed, he saw that there was an injured whale uh, sort of just floating out there. They thought it was already dead, but it wasn't. And they noticed a shark about 14 foot, a great white, heading toward it. And he does something unexpected, they say. No, no, no. That's not unexpected. If he had called for help and, you know, provided aid to the whale, that would have been surprising. Biting its tail and then, you know, just like literally just trying to eat it, that's not surprising at all. Because uh, <laughs> it wasn't there to fight back, it was just sitting still. However, one thing that was surprising is the fact that not only did it start trying chomping away at its tail, uh, it rolled the whale onto its back and try to push it, use its weight to push it underwater to drown it. That's, that's pretty impressive. That is something that it has, you know, we, uh, whale needs to breathe, uh, must drown. Like you have to, you have to understand that as a shark. It, 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 normally it's just bite until it dies, you know, until it bleeds out and you just eat whatever's there 
and you're done. Eh, it doesn't take too much thought. In this case, uh, it's it was a, a bit more. So uh, the funny thing is I jumped all the way to the end after I watched a considerable part of the beginning just to set up the whole thing. I jumped to the end and it said as if nothing in between <laughs> had transpired because it still was picking up on that story in the last two minutes, three minutes maybe, of the, of the episode. 44 minutes, uh, 2020, uh, it, it just continued the story. Like, whatever was in between must have been research or just chatter or maybe they read a book or something. I don't know. But at the end, um, he actually succeeded in drowning. The the, the shark, oh, sorry, not a he, but a she, because he recognized her because he tagged her previously and her name was Helen. So Helen drowned a shark. I'm sorry, dr Helen drowned a whale for funsies, well, and for dinner. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. So this is one of the more interesting ones. You kind of figure, these these kind of, they're kind of clickbaity titles, like, oh, a shark versus Shih Tzu. A shark versus, like, a uh, lion. You know, like, shark versus astronaut. Like, what's going to happen? Like, yeah, it's, like, I'm going to watch that shark versus astronaut video, but I'm pretty sure how it's going to go, for the most part. If it's on the moon... Definite advantage to the astronaut. Just saying. But in this case, yeah, it was, yeah, it's it, it tends to be a little clickbaity and disappointing. But in this case, it, it wasn't. It was it was it had a little bit of insight. But again, it seems like the entire forty minutes of it was unnecessary to <laughs> to finish the story. I don't know. You'll have to judge for yourself if you decide to watch it. Assuming you're watching this far, because holy cow, this is probably going to be the longest video of my life. Whew. Okay, next one. Uh, this one's a silly name. You didn't know that sharks went to jail. This one is Sharkatraz. Not kidding. Sharkatraz. Okay. I have to admit, Sharkatraz is a super clickbaity title that, like, it just makes you laugh. Like, what is, why, why is, why is there a thing called Sharkatraz? What do sharks have to do with the prison? Well, you know, obviously you think about it for two seconds and you think, oh yeah, well, obviously there's probably sharks in the San Francisco Bay and uh, it, it would be a great deterrent to those in the prison, I, on the prison island, uh, from ever going, oh, you know what, I think I'm going to escape and swim for it. Yeah, well, uh, there was no evidence for a very long time that sharks were even in the bay, but it was a story that was told by the guards and, and such uh, that would discourage people from uh, trying to escape through the waters. Not that people didn't do it anyway. Um, in fact, there's a, a very a number of famous stories, infamous stories of uh, escapes, but some or many of them uh, were never found <laughs> again. Uh, maybe they escaped. Um, there is a slight spoilerish thing here uh, regarding Loki season two and one of the characters. It does, there is a sequence that connects to Alcatraz and one of our characters in the story. Um, but there are no sharks in Loki, so that's just a little side story that was unnecessary. But uh, I did watch, there was a one sequence where people were just, you know, you know, taking a tourist thing and cameras were rolling, videotape, you know, whatever, phones or whatever were rolling, and somebody caught a shark jumping, a white, great white shark jumping out of the water to, to eat a sea lion, and it changed everything for everybody there. Uh, they started taking greater interest in shark activity in the San Francisco Bay. And uh, yeah, it, it, <laughs> they keep going, man, that would have really worked really well in, in discouraging people from escaping if that had ever happened while we had people in prison. In, in fact, uh, the prison was open until the 1960s, I believe. Um, they even have archival interviews with certain people at least they seem archival. They seem older where these guys are talking about uh, the fear of sharks in the waters, uh, they, even though they had no real evidence of any at the time because some of the footage is a, little, is a little bit grainy. But this I spent more time than I expected to watching. It was, uh, it, to me, it, having the historical aspect uh, in relation to sharks made it more interesting for me. So I recommend it if that is an angle that you would appreciate. Uh, of course, you just get to see all that. I love the the crazy, I've never been to Alcatraz. I've been to San Francisco many times. I've never gotten to go to Alcatraz. I want to just because of the old architecture of something that was meant to hold some of the world most world's, the world's most dangerous men uh, is kind of is interesting to me. So, and sharks, 
maybe not after this. I'm pretty much done with sharks after this. I think you might be too. <laughs> All right, next, uh, we got a twofer uh, because there's one uh, show or special and then a spinoff. It's uh, Sharkano and Sharkano Hawaii. I'm going to try to do them together. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, that's a disturbing face. I'm sorry for that. This is Sharkano. Today's, or today's, all this is one day. It's one day done continuously for 36 part in 36 parts. Um, yeah, Sharkano. Why? Why we've, uh, we've had, didn't, wasn't there a thing with sharks and the tornadoes and stuff not too long ago? Uh, I don't know. I, I can't remember uh, what that was. But either way. Sharkano is a real thing, technically. Uh, this is a 44-minute documentary special kind of thing from 2020 uh, that is uh, volcanoes erupt. They create uh, an environment in which life can grow, which draws in fish and coral reefs, and just sort of builds all sorts of an environment um, habitat in which things can feed and get shelter, and then it attracts uh, bigger predators, which then can feed on them, and then it brings in sharks, because sharks love the warm water as it is, and they can do cold too, but they love the warm water. They found, if you watch this, you will find sharks living in an active volcano, not in the lava, no, but and not flying through the sky with an, ex, you know, with an eruption, no. That is not a thing, but, uh, because I kind of sense when these things happen, I guess. That's what they're, I think that's what they're assuming. Uh, but they uh, can, they, they stay in the warm water. They know that there's other animals and fish and whatever else that they could feed upon that might be hanging out in that area. Uh, despite it's, the water's all cloudy and kind of messy, but uh, still, yeah, they're, they're not, they're not dumb. So, um, it, you know what, while I'm, I'm not even going to cut, I'm going to go right to Sharkano, Hawaii, which is right there. And I'm gonna slightly change the color. Come on, there we go. There we go, that's the blue. I'm not even gonna cut, because, uh, hey, uh, same, same thing I just said, but Hawaii. <clears throat> this is 2023, so it's brand new. Uh, it's uh, three years later. The quality of the camera work is so much cleaner, so much high, much more high res, uh, probably at least four, eight, four to eight K. <clears throat> I don't know what cameras they use, but yeah, but this is Hawaii, of course, plenty of volcanoes and, and volcanic act activity and looks gorgeous when the, the just the, it's an underwater volcano. Yeah. Why wouldn't you have sharks? So that's really all I got to say about that. Uh, if you like the first one, you can probably want to watch the second one. It's interesting. Uh, Mike Heithouse, is Dr. Mike Heithouse uh, and Francis... Uh, I'm sorry, Francis, I forgot the last name. But yeah, they uh, they are the, kind of the hosts of, of this and sort of explain why it all works together and how it works. So it's kind of interesting. I like the Alcatraz, just Sharkatraz, a little bit better because of history. But man, Hawaii looks gorgeous. I probably get there sometime. Uh, so the next thing we've got, oh, we're almost done. Instead of Hawaii, we're going on the to the Atlantic Ocean now to... The Sharks of the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle. Sharks of the Bermuda Triangle is what we've just watched, what I've just watched, at least partially. <clears throat> now, what, what's so special about, you know, we know all the mystery and the craziness that goes on with the mythology of the Bermuda Triangle. But if you watch one of the previous episodes I've had a couple months ago about the Bermuda Triangle, there's a lot of stuff that's been debunked about that over the years. It's, yeah, it makes for a great X-Files episode or maybe even a me mediocre one. But it also, it's, it's, it's kind of exaggerated in the, the mystery that surrounds that area. However, what does that mean for sharks, if not for people? Uh, does it make them crazy? Do, are, are they mating with aliens? Well, they're certainly mating. They're not necessarily mating with aliens. Uh, turns out, uh, spoiler, if you were planning on watching this, um, the Bermuda Triangle, including the tongue of the ocean, which is a, very a strange title for a certain area of uh, Bermuda. Uh, the, 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 the sharks like to go, especially the tiger sharks, like to go to the depths of that area and mate. So there you go. 
that's uh, there's that the mystery of the sharks of the, of the Bermuda Triangle right there. Uh, so there's footage of it too, which I don't understand. But apparently, it's a quantum leap in in. Uh, I understand how mating works. Okay, I mean shark mating in the dark. That I, I don't see anything. I just see blobs. So, uh, but apparently, according to these scientists, it's a quantum leap in understanding how sharks mate in the dark somewhere in Bermuda. So, there you go. That's uh, something that you might find interesting. Uh, the next thing we want to watch is another versus. It's not a shark versus. It's sharks versus dolphins. Bahamas Battleground. Yeah. So, sharks versus dolphins. Bahamas Battleground. Next. Back with Sharks versus Dolphins. Bahamas Battleground. <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> if you've actually watched this far or past the first 30 seconds, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is this is an exercise in uh, self-abuse here. Uh, yeah, I cut off the shark thing for a reason. But hey, we're cutting through. We're chewing through all of these right now. Sharks versus Dolphins, Bahamas Battleground. That's a very clickbaity title. It sounds exciting. It sounds thrilling. Uh, it, it's a, it seems like a really one-sided affair. I, maybe I missed something by skipping head to the end, but it's like 30% of dolphins. Like, oh, it doesn't say it there. It says it somewhere else, but it's like nearly 30%. Is this the right one? Yeah. Sharks versus Dolphins, uh, Bahamas Battleground. Uh, it says there's like 30% of all dolphins, especially in the Bimini, Bermuda, Florida area, all have shark bites on them. Uh, so it's a testament that it tells us, yeah, sharks attack dolphins. And it also says that dolphins can survive, can escape these attacks. So uh, yeah, they, it seems like a pretty one-sided affair. I don't, I don't know of any dolphins that are just one or more ganging up on a shark and going, oh, dinner tonight, guys, let's get that shark. No, there's nobody going after a great white or a tiger shark or a hammerhead or whatever. Bull shark. No, nobody's going after No dolphins are ganging up in bull sharks and just biting the crap out of them. Not happening. Not happening. But makes for an interesting tale and how they interact. interact. If you want to see a lot of dolphins get bitten in half... <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> uh, I otherwise I I might avoid it, but yeah, it's uh, Michael uh, Dr. Michael Heithouse again with his crew um, talking about all the sharks. He's he's all over this stuff. He's the go-to guy in the gang. But uh, this time we got another somewhat silly name. We'll see how this goes. Maybe their uh, America is a little bit <laughs> better. Uh, more united than ours right now, the United Sharks of America. Okay, sure. And then, yeah, United Sharks of America. United Sharks of America. Uh, actually, when it came up, the title was showed Shark Attacks USA or something. It was a completely different title, but I guess there was just too many things that said shark attack in the title. I don't know. I don't think they're that picky when it comes to the names. This, he's got a good set of chompers there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, shark, uh, United Sharks of America, literally it just focuses on shark attacks in the United States, around the United States. In fact, it focuses on the top five states in the, United, in the U.S. that uh, have the most shark attacks. That's really the stats they're going for, and why, and where, and everything else. And, of course, Nevada was number one. No, of course it was not. Uh, it was the usual ones. We got some Carolinas in there. We got a Hawaii. We got California. We got Florida, of course. Can you figure out which one might be number one? I don't know. Might be also be the one with the most crocodile bites, too, or alligator bites. <sighs> it's just... I know what the answer is. I'm, you know, you can just guess. Uh, so yeah, that's it's interesting. If you want to have a very U.S. focused shark attack uh, episode, <laughs> here you go. That's it, right there. United Sharks of America. Man, I'm glad I don't have to do all 36 of these graphics. Um,
because they're gonna it look so similar <laughs> uh what's the next one? Oh, man we're almost at the end what the shark yeah no literally that is what it's called what the shark is the next episode see you back here what the shark uh this is uh this is, might be my favorite of the episodes so far, and the fact that we're this far in the list says a lot, because I've seen most of them now. We are on the final stretch. What the Shark, which I did not expect much from. I watched a little bit of it. I actually, if, any, if I was going to go back on any of them, I think I would go back and watch the whole thing of this, just for the visuals, because... Have I seen any of them? Yeah, I think, yeah. This is one of the more interesting ones. Uh, it's all the freaks of nature. Like, it's not your normal smooth gray white, sh you know, the, 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 the great white sharks or things like that. I mean, the weirdo that we all see for the most part is the hammerhead shark, just because of the, the eyes on either side of this, you know, this array that in the front, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. But that ain't nothing compared to half the freaks in this menagerie. Uh, so yeah, this, this guy is normal, even with like the saddle and the, yeah, this is, yeah, that's not natural. Um, so <laughs> if you want to watch some of the weirdest sharks, and this is a carpet shark right here. He sits on the, on the floor and sort of blends in real nice and wait just for fish to hang out. There's him and his buddy just having a chat and all of a sudden, shlum, he just, he opens his mouth, sucks in everything in front of him. And that fish was gone. Yeah. <laughs> fish or fishes. It's And pretty much anything else around him is gone. They, there's a ton of slow motion shots of just like two different fishes. Like one doesn't even get fully in his mouth. It's it's like a pretty decent size fish. And he just sort of gets jammed in his mouth, but he chomps down. And you get to see the, the guy just snap. <laughs> and just, yeah, it's... Is pretty twisted stuff. And then there's one toward the end. I skipped over the middle, and I probably shouldn't have. That's why I kind of want to go back. Uh, but I am, I'm sharked out uh, almost. When I'm done with this, I am sharked out. I'm not, I want to see another shark for a long time. Maybe the Meg, too. That's, that's a Megalodon. But so, it's sort of the same, but not really. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, um, that's, that's I, would, I would recommend this if you just want to see some You've seen all the sharks, but you ain't seen these. And some of these are kind of ancestors connected to the sharks in some ways, uh, but they're not your standard sharks. They're very strange. Yeah. All right, the next one we're going to watch is uh, we have two whens and two worlds, and we're all done. The first one is when sharks attack and why. They're going to answer that question. Coming up next, what sh when, sh when sharks attack and why. When sharks attack and why, I accidentally did this out of order. It was supposed to be a different when sharks attack, but it doesn't matter. I went with it, and that's what I'm going to talk about. We'll go to the other one next. This uh, is a series, actually, of 45-minute episodes-ish, 45-minute-ish episodes, uh, and there's eight of them. The first one starts off in Long Island, New York, and uh, just features a stories of real, they warned you at the beginning, real shark attack stories, even though, yes, they are recreations cut together with stock footage of sharks swimming and looking like they're biting, and the footage that people who are researching sharks would have filmed by putting a camera in their mouth when they got close to the cage kind of thing. And then there, there was intercut with footage of guy getting, ah, uh, and then blood everywhere, fake blood everywhere. It's it's just the way it is. It's just to tell the story. There was hardly uh, at the for the first episode, which is the only one I watched, a little bit of, um, like a professional like lifeguard kind of guy who trained who was training other other lifeguards to uh, to you know rescue people to, to to take care of uh, any issues that people might have. Before they even got started, he got bit like literally just like something got gnawing on his arm and uh, yeah kind of really messed things up for him for a bit. I think he saved the hand pretty much, but uh, it, it goes into details as to, you know, how it, each of these episodes talk about a different area, different people, their experiences, and why uh, it happens. Well, that's the title, right? Yeah. Boy, I really told you something you didn't know. <laughs> I'm tired. 
aren't you? Uh, assuming you made it this far. Nobody's made it this far. I'm talking to myself. I guarantee this at this point. <sighs> All right, we're going to get to the next one. Uh, we only have three to go. When Sharks Attack 360, which should have been before this alphabetically, but doesn't matter. When Sharks Attack 360, all around us. I don't know. 360 all around on the, <laughs> on the next episode, but in a, in a few seconds. Okay, bye. Why When Sharks Attack 360? I added the why. But when Sharks Attack 360 is, uh, well, what makes it different? It's a series. It's a number of it's one season i think it's like uh six episodes six episodes of uh, 44 minute ish episodes, along uh shows uh talk about different things that uh might cause a, a shark attack and uh the first one features a couple of guys who basically got bit attacked and uh and they were basically trying to figure out how uh, they, uh, they attracted the fish. And first the thought is always blood, maybe they speared a fish and then that the blood there would have attracted the shark and came around and he's like, oh, more meat, and then decided to eat them. It, he didn't succeed, by the way, but they found out that it might have been not just uh, the smell of blood, but maybe the sound. Uh, they're used to hearing maybe, at this point, maybe people spearing fish, and guess what? Maybe that's, uh, that's what caused the shark to show up. Don't know, but uh, one of the most interesting things about this that puts the 360 angle on this is the fact that um, there's a guy who's explaining things, and I didn't get his name, uh, in a, like in a studio, no, like a warehouse room, and they have uh, a three-dimensional floating shark sort of right next to him, and he points out different things, and they sometimes they bisect it and go, oh, this is what the brain looks like, this is what the interior looks like, and sometimes they just have to fish or the sharks swimming around him as he's explaining things. It's just a 3D digital model that's just, you know, looks like it's real. And he's acting like it's really there, but it's not. So, yeah, it's 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 neat that way. It could be more educational for kids in that sense. So uh, they might find that interesting. They're like, whoa, that guy is just standing there and there's sharks swimming around him. That might freak some kids out and might think it's cool. Who knows? But uh yeah, it's this is this one's definitely more has a more educational. Not that any of these aren't educational. But some of them are a little bit more sensationalistic than others. So, all right, the final two. Uh, they are the world's biggest two two world's biggest. And the first one we're going to do is the world's biggest hammerhead? Question mark. World's biggest hammerhead? Question mark. Uh, this is a 44-minute uh, documentary from 2022. And uh, I, noticed I didn't even have to look to see 44 minutes because it's they're all 44 minutes. Uh, this is it has a bunch of explorers uh, searching out the the uh, elusive, endangered hammerhead shark. Hopefully, the biggest one. But honestly, how do you know you have the biggest one until you've literally searched every inch, every level of the ocean, everywhere? You just don't know. Maybe you can find the biggest so far, but not necessarily the biggest. It, there could be one twice the size somewhere that nobody's ever seen. You know, just the way it works. <laughs> so if you're interested in hammerheads, this is, this is all for you. Maybe they find the big one. I won't tell you if they do or not, but, you know, that's up to you if you want to watch it. We have one more to go. And it's the world's biggest tiger shark? Question mark. So, world's biggest tiger shark next. The world's biggest tiger shark, question mark. That is basically the last one. It is the last one uh, of all the Disney Plus ones that we have, I, but I should tell you about it. Um, just like the one before it, there's a bunch of researchers going out uh, who have seen a pretty dang big tiger shark, uh, probably one of the most uh, biggest, best known and um, powerful uh, types of sharks out there. And yeah. Uh, they were hoping to find that one again and maybe even something bigger. Uh, something along the lines of 18 feet long, which is pretty massive. Um, do they find it? Well, you have to watch it to find out. But it's, again, it's it's a pretty self-contained episode of people uh, searching the water and using this technology and science and everything else to learn more about them and discover more about what they can do to find them, help them, and... Uh, 
let, let them thrive. In fact, uh, in French Polynesia, where the the episode was filmed, uh, they banned the, they banned sharks from being uh, fished like 14 years ago from this episode. So that was 2006 or something. This is 2020, uh, 44 minutes long. Uh, and uh, the, it's, they, I'm surprised they didn't call it Sharktopolis, Sharktopolis or whatever it is, because it's, it, that's what they called it pretty much. It's just teeming with sharks now, which is great for the species. So um, yeah, it doesn't make it easier to swim, but, <laughs> but it's, hey, nature uh, bouncing back. So that's good. So yeah, uh, check it out if that's uh, that's your thing. If you like sharks, I am probably not going to watch any more shark things ever. <laughs> uh, on that, at least documentaries, I don't know. Marvel has a character named Jeff the Shark. He's a cute little guy, and he uh, he, he might show up in a cartoon at some point. Um, but yeah, I'll watch that. But uh, yeah, this, I, before this, there was 18. We watched 18 over the last few years, shark episodes. And I said, I'm done. No more shark episodes were showing up twice a week, half the time. Or uh, and, and I was just not having it anymore. But for the 1500th episode, if you made it this far, which again, I guarantee none of you have, because I don't think I'm I'm going to make it this far. <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to watch this. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. It's going to be the longest video, I'm pretty sure. 36 parts, at least. Holy moly. All right. Uh, now i got to figure out what I said uh, the next episode is. Come on. Because, yes, because it's Christmas time, and I already know it's already been picked. Uh, come on. i got to scroll. Yeah, I didn't think about this before I started it. Now the video is even longer. Good grief. Come on. 1501. Which, which, what's going to be our 1501 episode? The Shepherd. The Shepherd is a brand new uh, sh short story uh, based on a UK classic story. Uh, people from the UK will recognize it. Uh, but Americans, this, might, this is the first time. Is, I think it's for the first time anywhere it's been put to film. And it features an appearance by John Travolta. So, yeah. He does not dance in this one. Or shoot anybody. So, <laughs> depending on which version of John Travolta you know. Uh, so, yeah. The Shepherd. It's a, a Christmas tale. That's what we're watching next in the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. <sighs> it's over. It's over. Thanks to Connor and Parker for the shark. Bye.